Hello, this is Lisa with Quilting Block of the Month Facebook group. This block here for our second one for June 2020 is called Crazy Anne. This is a traditional block that a lot of people like. You've got your flying geese, two sets in four different ones of them. Um, this one we've done it in two colors. Uh, you can choose to do the center a little bit different and do it similar to the flying uh, Flying Dutchman. Um, you can make them all go in the same direction, all pointing towards um, opposite, however you want to do it. I'm going to lay it out in the traditional format here. So the first part we'll do will be we'll create the flying geese for the center, and then we'll create these four corner pieces here that we'll just sew on. So to get started, for my flying geese in the center, you're going to need two different colors. And of each, you're going to need one piece that's five and three quarters inch by five and three quarters inch. And then you're going to need four of three and one quarter inch by three and one quarter inch of both colors. And they're going to match up. This is going to be one set, and this is going to be one set. Then for your corners here, these triangle corners here, you're going to need three different colors here, or at least I did. The way I've got it set up is I've got opposites with this lighter blue, and then i got the darker teals here in the opposite. You can make all four of them identical, you can make all four of them different, and then I've got my yellow pieces here. And so on these pieces here, and your yellow, you're going to need four pieces, and they need to be three and seven eighths inch by three and seven eighths inch squares. And then the two colors here for your four corners, You'll need two of each at three and a half by three and a half inch squares. So we'll just set these aside for the moment. And we're going to work on setting up our flying geese. So I'd like to do the no waste flying geese, which is taking your five and a qu three quarters inch square and attaching pieces. So the first thing that you're going to need to do is you're going to need to take all of your squares and on the back you're going to need to do one of two options one option is get a ruler draw a line down the middle and then you'll stitch a quarter of an inch on each side of it or I love my little quarter inch ruler here that you just simply lay it match up the center line on opposite corners here take your marker or pencil, draw a line on each side, and those are actually going to be my seam where I stitch. So I'll have lines already set up to stitch. Um, and so you'll do that to all four of your piece of the her, one color and all four of the others. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take the smaller squares, do this one here because I got marked, um, the five and three quarters inch square with the opposite and these. You are going to lay them, put one down, making sure that your either your single line goes across the middle here, um, or if you got the double lines like I did using a quarter inch ruler, that they go across. You don't want them going from side to side. Because what you're going to do is you're going to place one here, you're going to take a second one, and you're going to place it over here. And you want those lines to match up. So if you put them sideways, they're not going to match up. If you put them in the, like this, your lines aren't going to be there together. So make sure that your lines are there together, and then you're going to sew either on this line straight down both sides of this, or if you have a single line, you'll sew a quarter of an inch on each side of that line. And let me get those sewn up for you. Okay, now after you've sewn either down this, both lines, both across, or down a quarter of an inch on both sides of a straight line. What you're going to do is you're going to get a ruler, and you're going to line it up, again, between those two stitch lines, going from the corner to the corner, and then you are just going to cut those in half. Now you've got two. Now you're going to just set one piece aside for the moment. You're going to take, actually take them both to your iron, and you're going to press them open. 
Okay, so after you've got those seams pressed upward, then what you're going to do is you're going to take one more of these little squares. And you're going to line it up here on this opposite, on the big part of the pink, or on the big color of the square. And then you're going to do, make sure your line is going from outward up towards the two. You don't want it again. You don't want it going from short side to side. You want it to go from here and then again stitch up your lines here or a quarter of an inch on both sides. And as you see here, I've got that done. I've got the seam here and here. So then when you're done with this, what you're going to do is you're going to take and you're going to cut bet between those two seams. Again, from the corner to the corner. So line up a ruler here from there. And we're just going to slide right up. And then we're going to fold them up and we're going to press them. Okay, so after you've cut those in half and you've pressed your seams up, you have a flying geese. Now, the only problem is you need to make sure that the correct size that you're wanting. The size that we are wanting for this block is 2 and 5 eighths by 3, 4 and 3 quarters. So 2 and 5 eighths by 4 and 3 quarters. Now, when you trim, you have to take into consideration that these do have a center point in them. So you want to make sure that you are trimming equally on both sides and equally on both sides this direction. If you're not, then your blocks are not going to be square and won't line up. So we are wanting them to all be this size here, which is four and three quarters this way, and the two and five eighths this way. So what the first thing I do when I go to trim is if I'm going to, I measure these. Well, obviously they're bigger than what I need. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my quarter of an inch line up here, and I want that at my point, because I want a quarter of an inch seam allowance up here for sewing. And then down here I look if that's where I trim off and I've got more than what I need to trim off at the bottom. So then just look at the bottom, kind of line up the bottom and make sure you're straight. Or look at your edges here and make sure that they're straight. And then you're just going to trim off the top. Flip it around. Now line up this point here with your 5 eighths. 2 and 5 eighths inch. So I've got my little 5 eighths inch line here. And then I'm going to trim off up here. So now I've got the correct height. Now is my how is my width? I think my width was too big. It is. It's 5 inches. 5 inches. So we don't want to just cut off a half an inch or a quarter of an inch off one side because if we do that, then our center is not going to be in the center. So for a four and three quarters inch, the center is at two and three eighths. So with the point here at the center, I just line up by two and three eighths inch. So I line up. And again, make sure that your lines here and here are straight, otherwise you might have it crooked. And then I just simply trim off the bottom here. Now that I know that side's correct, I can just turn it around and measure from the bottom up, but I want to show you how to measure from both sides. So I go ahead and flip it over, because my single digit numbers are over here, where it's got 17, 16, 15 here. So again, I look for that 2 and 3 eighths. And I line it up at the center point there, where my stitches cross. Make sure that that is straight at the top and the bottom. And then I trim off. And now I have two squares that are the same size. They're supposed to be. and three quarters. Yep, so they're about the same size. So you're going to trim up these four to all be the same size. Then you're going to repeat all those steps using your other color here. 
So you're going to go ahead and line these up opposite here, stitch them across, cut through the center, press them open, then you'll take one of these, you'll put it here, you'll stitch both sides, cut it in half, and then you're going to have your other half, you'll do that as well. And then once you have all eight of your flying geese together, I will show you how to assemble it together. Okay, now that I've got both sets of the flying geese squared up to the two and three, two and five eighths by four and three quarters, there is a little bit of scrap from trimming it, but it's a lot easier for me to trim a little bit off than it is for it to be short or out of not have enough seam allowance. So now what you're going to do is we're going to be making these in here. It is basically two sets or four sets here of two. So what we're going to do, you can decide which way you want. Do you want this to be pink or do you want it to be purple? It's just as simple as flipping them around to decide which way you want. So since I have this one as pink and purple like that, I think I'm going to do these this direction. So you just match them all up so that you've got four sets. See that one down there. And make sure they're all the same. Now, if you're doing the Flying Dutchman, this is where you could just basically kind of make them and let's see, rotate them around. So you can kind of put them in whatever order that you want. We are going to make, go ahead, so what we're going to do is we're going to just take these t four sets here, just fold them over, and you're going to stitch a quarter of an inch seam allowance. I usually recommend putting the side where you've got your point up, just so that you can make sure that you don't miss that little point in there. If you sew too far, you'll miss your point. If you sew too, you know, inward, or if you sew too short, then you might have some extra purple in there. So what I go ahead and do is that helps me as I'm going along. Make sure my bottoms are lined up. My sides are all lined up. And then I go ahead and I will usually just pin it and then stitch all along here. And then you just do that to all four sets and then you press them. Okay, once you've got your two pieces sewn together, and the four sets of them, when you do press, I do recommend pressing upward. That way you're reducing some of this bulk here in the middle where you've got your point, because otherwise if you do it down, it is a lot more layers. It's not a big deal, but um, I just think it's easier to push up. You can press the seams open again if you want. It just depends on how you want to do it. Now you need to take a moment and stop. This is a good point to make sure that we're still in the correct size because a little bit off can make your block off. So as you know, these were four and three quarters inches across like this. Now we need to make sure that they are four and three quarters inch that way. If you've got a ruler that's got a diagonal line, that works so great because you basically just line up your outside edges here. Make sure that's going through. And look to see that you've got five and three quarters and five and three quarters. That way your block is sewn together right. If you're short, you might have made your seams too big um, when you sewed the two pieces together. So you might want to take it out and re and resew it to make sure that it fits. So just make sure that all four pieces are the correct size. Then for this particular block, the way I find it the easiest to lay out. As I lay them all identical laid up. Because this block is basically, you take one and rotate it once. Take it one and you rotate it twice. And then this one, you're going to rotate it three times. So you've got one up, over, down, and out. And that'll put, put your four blocks together. Now if this isn't a pattern that you like, this is a point that you can make them if you want to do the Flying Dutchman, where you've got either like opposites, you can put them together and have zig you know, zigzags in there, you can have them, um, let's see, kind of rotated, 
in this order. You can kind of do them however you want. You could have done them half of them with the pink in the middle and half with the purple to give another look or completely different. It's completely up to you. But for the, this particular block, I'm doing it in the order that, or the layout that originally was done. And this is the layout. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew these two together up here, these two together here. Then I'm going to sew the four of them together and we'll have the middle of our block done. And then we'll work on the corner triangles. Okay. As you can see, I've got the top two and the bottom two together. When I did press the seams, I did press them again towards the bottom of the triangles just because there's less bulk in there than there is in these seams than if you press this direction. I do it this way. That way I can turn these two together here and I can nest my seams and it makes help me line them up a little bit more in the, in the center. Uh, but you can press the seams open if that's how you would rather do. Okay, after you've got those two rows sewn together, I go ahead and pressed them open just because you've got a lot of bulk in both of these sides here and it just reduced it just a tad bit. No matter which way you went, you had a lot of bulk. This block here, the center is a nine inch square block. So if you want to square it up, make sure everything's good. It is nine inch square. So you can just set it aside. Then you're going to take your yellow pieces here. And what you're going to do on all four pieces is you're going to draw, go diagonally from corner to corner and you're going to cut them in half. So you've got two pieces. You'll do that with all four. Then you'll take one of your triangle pieces here and our piece is going to go like this. This is going to be pointed upward and your pieces are going to line up just like this. You don't want them like this or like that. So basically, you're going to take your square and just rotate a piece around. So, then the first step you're going to do is you are going to rotate this over. And you are going to match the top here and down. And you're going to sew this side that you just folded up from. You are going to sew a quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way down then you're going to press it open. Okay, so after you've sewn that quarter of an inch seam allowance there, you're going to press it. Go ahead and press it towards your, in this case, my yellow piece, away from your center square. Then once you've done that, lay it back out. The best thing to do is make sure you have a straight line down here, a straight line going up this way, and a potentially straight line this direction. If you've got this one again turned, this turn, you're going to see we don't have those straight lines. So again, the best thing is laid out. Then roll this piece up here. And if it helps, throw a clip on so you know this is the side I'm stitching down. Um, and so you're just going to stitch a quarter of an inch seam allowance down this side. So I've got that sewn right here. I've got that quarter of an inch seam allowance. And again, I'm going to press it out. I now still have the smooth point here and pretty much straight across here. Now you got your little dog ears here from full putting those two pieces together. So what you can do is just simply line up a ruler there and just trim them off. Not really a matter, it just helps reduce your bulk. Now you're going to complete this for all four of the color to this color and then the two others or if you did them all the same you do them all the same so you're gonna have four sets of these that we're then going to assemble to our square here okay when you've got all of the all four of these done whether it's two sets of two four different ones or all identical um for this layout with the two different colors it doesn't matter how you lay them down so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to lay them on opposite sides of the square. Then we're going to lay these as well on the opposite side of the square. And as you see, our square start, our block is starting to come into place. So again, I got my lights across and I got my teals across. 
So basically, this is just going to be kind of going around the block. So just pick one side. Take the center here, where your center of your point is. It needs to match up with this line, the center seam here. So that you're getting your block exactly in the middle. Just take a pin. Just kind of clip it as you go. Match both sides. And then you're going to sew a quarter of an inch seam allowance down here. Again, when you get close to this point in the middle, just make sure that you're not going too far either way. That way your point will line up just right. When you're done, press it open. Go ahead and press it towards this piece here because there's a lot less bulk here than there is back there. So press it open like this. Then you'll come in and you'll do the next one and you'll just rotate all the way around. So I'll sew them on and I'll show you what the next step is. Okay, just as a reminder, when you're starting to stitch this seam here, your triangle is going to be sticking out a little bit. Do not worry about that. It's kind of like your dog ears when you're making half square triangles. We'll trim those off, but for right now, don't worry about it because your seam allowance is far enough inside that they're no longer going to have those. So, just press it, like I said, press it towards the outer piece to reduce a little bit of the bulk here and here. You can see I've got my point there. Pretty much got my point there. Now I'm just going to take this next piece and I'm just going to flip it over. So I got a dark and now I'm going to do a lighter. Again, I'm going to match the middle of this point up with the middle of the point there. And I'm just going to clip it and then just match the other two ends up as well. And so a quarter of an inch seam allowance and press it open. Okay, so I've got my quarter of an inch seam allowance. Again, you can see my ear, these kind of stick out a little bit, the triangles. But that's okay. When you press it open, as you see, we've got a straight line here, but we've got a couple little dog ears. In the end, we'll trim all of these off so they're not really in the way. So the next thing you're going to do, then you're just going to rotate on to the next piece and then the final piece. Okay, so now that I've got all four sides going around. I've got them pressed out outward towards the outside pieces. And you've got all these little dog ears. So you can just simply go in with a pair of scissors. You can use your rotary cutter. Um, whatever's easiest for you. And just go trim them off. And there you have, you have completed the second block for June, the Crazy Ann, and you can put it in a couple different pattern layouts that you want, however you want the center to go. Um, take the time, post your blocks on our Facebook group so that everybody can see your wonderful blocks, and thank you for joining us for this block.